it's widely acknowledged, at least anecdotally, that one can learn more from the study of the music of Johann Sebastian Bach than from any other composer. I think this is a... <clears throat> it's widely acknowledged, at least anecdotally, that one can learn more from the study of Bach's music than one can from any other composer. Uh, this is probably um, due to the rigor and perfection of his counterpoint, uh, the incredible uh, density and richness of his, of his music. Uh, also the fact that he was probably the only composer who really composed pure music. In other words, things like the musical offering uh, were not necessarily meant for one particular instrumentation. And in the same way, uh, the well-tempered clavier uh, is in many ways a keyboard work, but uh, in other ways there are properties and capabilities and parameters of the work that really speak to Bach's true nature and his true output. What I mean by that, I, I go back a couple of years to uh, reading uh, Music in the Castle of Heaven, John Elliott Gardner's biography of Johann Sebastian Bach, and also his traversal, his own personal journey in working on all of uh, Bach's liturgical works and other works. And uh, so I was reading this, as I always do, on the stair machine, and accompanied by uh, listening to all of Bach's works by one of my favorite conductors, Nicholas Harnencourt. And it occurred to me, these cantatas and masses, uh, oratorios, uh, that Bach was singular among many composers. I think the only ones who could approach his output of specifically lyric vocal music would be Mozart and Brahms. Brahms actually wrote uh, predominantly, uh, at least in the early part of his career, choral music. So these are composers who had strictly a, a, a lyric impulse at the base of their works. And uh, as opposed to someone like Beethoven, who, who I feel really had a, a, a sense of, you know, really how to make the piano work. And it was really more of a binary uh, situation. In Beethoven's music, there's soft and loud. There's, you know, getting louder from note to note to the peak of a phrase, getting softer towards the end. There's short and long, staccato and legato. And with, uh, with Bach, when you realize that most of his work was lyric, it becomes less a question of whether it's appropriate to play it on the harpsichord or the piano, and more a matter of acknowledging that as specifically vocal music is wrought, uh, there are probably as many articulations and releases of a note in a phrase as there are consonants in the German language, or elisions or incisions between words that make up a phrase. We don't have any phrase markings in Bach, for instance, but we have, of course, in the oratorios, actual phrases, actual lyrics that carry us through a musical gesture. And on that way, it's not a vocalese, it's not a matter of, as we say, you know, binarily with Beethoven, getting louder towards the peak of a phrase, getting shorter, uh, getting softer uh, towards the uh, weakening end of a phrase. It's really a matter of every note really being a uh, part and, and participant and contributor to the phrase itself. And this can be a matter of varying degrees of, of shortness, longness, uh, various degrees of space between the notes, whether we try and make a, uh, a momentum or whether we celebrate the inertia, the sh sticking our elbows out with each 16th note as opposed to making a cascade forward moving things. These are not things that are notated. As a matter of fact, in Bach's music, there's very little that's notated. There are no dynamic marks. 
there are occasionally, uh, but uh, mostly not, and mostly no articulation marks to speak of, although there are some very well-placed ones. And so I find, I have found working on Bach that uh, these are opportunities for freedom of expression, exploration, uh, you know, uh, imagination. That the fact that every note can have a different articulation from the next based on what word comes next in the phrase gives one a sense of, of really a responsibility but also an invitation for imagination and freedom and, uh, and creation, recreation, interpretation. So in making an online curriculum, I thought, well, I don't really have a method per se uh, of, of little technical tricks. I mean, I do actually a couple here and there, but I thought it would be more uh, interesting to uh, approach this from the standpoint of, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be recording and sharing the complete well-tempered clavier. And so uh, on the way through this journey, I will go uh, piece by piece and we will address each prelude, each fugue, uh, in reference to how I came to my interpretation and how I feel that the elements of the score that are there for us to, to glean and discern and interpret, uh, how I came about with my own interpretation and how that might lend itself to your own uh, musings on whatever instrument you play. So let's get started.